Jesus. God, we sing, great are you, Lord, in the room tonight. Can you lift your hands all over the room? His presence is already here. He's here to do miracles, signs, and wonders. God, you give life. You are love. You bring hope to the darkness. God, you restore. God, you are our mender, our protector. Hallelujah.
I wonder if we can just lift our voices tonight. We praise you, Jesus. You are great. You are King of kings and Lord of lords. Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. So thankful just to be with you all tonight in the house of the Lord. And I never want to take for granted, church, the opportunity to come into this house and into his presence. Amen. We're here to take up an offering tonight. And um, I wonder if we could just bow our heads. Lord, thank, we're so thankful, Lord, for your presence, Jesus, tonight. We ask you, Lord, just to bless this offering. Bless every gift in the giver. And we'll never fail, Lord, to give you praise and thanks. In the name of Jesus, amen. You're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my I've lost my direction, you're the compass for my way, you're the fire and light when nights are long and cold, in sadness you are the laughter that shatters all my fears, when I'm all alone your hand is there. Oh, oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. You're the center of my joy. You are why I find pleasure in the simple things in life. You're the music in the meadows and the streams. The voices of the children, my family and my home. You're the source and finish of my highest dreams. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment. All I do, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. Sing it with me. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. All that's good and perfect comes from you. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Oh, Jesus, you're the center of my joy. You're the heart of my contentment, hope for all I do. Jesus, you're the center of my If you're thankful, would you give the Lord a hand clap of praise and thank Him for being our joy? Uh, would you just stand to your feet if you're physically able?
I feel the presence of the Lord in this house tonight. There's a sweet presence of God here. We have a lot to be thankful for. Turn to your neighbor and tell him, I have a lot to be thankful for. We can even praise God on our good days, and we can praise God on our bad days. Very easy to praise God on our good days. And it's very easy to look down on God on our bad days. But in everything, give Him thanks. I said, in everything, give Him thanks, for this is the will of God in Christ Jesus concerning you. We are who we are today because of our good days and bad days, and God's brought us through. Turn to somebody and tell them, God's brought me through it all, and I'm so very, very thankful for that tonight. I want to thank you for being in the house of the Lord. I think we ought to just raise our hands and just thank God right now. Thank God for your good days and your bad days, for He's the same, and He is still God, and God is still doing His work in our life. Lord, I give you praise. For, Lord, we know that you're the center of our life and everything revolves around you, Lord. And we stand on the word of God that says, Seek first the kingdom of God and your rights, and all these things shall be added unto us. Uh, we give you praise. We give you glory. We give you honor tonight, Lord. We feel the angels of Almighty God that's in this house right now. We love you tonight, Lord. I thank you for your blessings. I thank you for your provisions. I thank you for being with us every step of the way. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, ask our elders to come forward tonight. We want to pray for those that are in need. We just want to walk carefully tonight. There's a unique presence of the Lord here tonight. come to share with some of you tonight that God's eyes are upon you. The Bible says that his eyes roam to and fro throughout the earth. God sees, God knows, and God understands. And I believe that he's doing a great work in your life. Even when we believe he's not working, He's working on our behalf for His intended purpose and will in our life. Aren't you thankful for that? Aren't you thankful for that tonight? I'm, I'm thankful for the scripture that says He'll never leave us nor forsake us. He's with us to the ends of the earth. His eyes are upon us. And so we ask you if you have a need tonight, make your way to the front, come in faith, believing. I'm thankful that we have a God that we can call on tonight. And so while you're coming, there's some very important prayer requests we need to bring your attention tonight, amen, if we can have some ladies to gather behind, Sister Sarah and Sister Anna tonight, we want to pray with them, believing God to minister to them, amen. We want to greet you tonight in the name of the Lord on behalf of Brother Witt. He wanted us to say three words to you, and that is praise the Lord. I think we ought to praise the Lord with Brother Witt right now. Come on, I think we ought to praise the Lord with him. If he was here, he'd be clapping his hands and raising his voice. The Lord is strengthening him and helping him. Amen. This wonderful, wonderful man. Amen. Wonderful man. And so continue to pray for him that God would strengthen and help him. We'll begin seeing him again tomorrow. And uh, we're glad to tell you he's going through his therapy and doing well. We want to pray for Elder Smith tonight as well, that God would touch him and minister to him. Sister Brianna Eskew is in need of prayer. I want to pray for Sister Donna Wilhite. She is in a rehabilitation center there in Taze Valley. Visited with her yesterday, and we're glad to tell you she's doing well. She's doing well with therapy, and we thank the Lord. Amen for that. I want to continue to pray for Sister Barnes. Also want to continue to pray for Brother Brian Atkins. He has been in therapy over the last uh, few weeks. He told me as I visited with him yesterday, he's supposed to go home on Monday. And so we believe that's going to be the case, and let's give God praise for that. It's been a... Long road, but the Lord's helping him and touching him. Amen. Need to continue to pray for Brother Louis Lane. He is in a rehabilitation center as well in Compass there, which used to be Health South in Huntington, and so we want to pray for him. Need to pray for Isabella. I received a call from Brother Frank tonight. He was picking her up for church, and I know she wouldn't mind me telling you this, is that she has uh, troubles with seizure, and when he was picking her up, she went into a seizure and had to call the paramedics. 
And so we want to pray for her tonight that God would touch her. We'll be checking on her immediately following service. We want to pray. She had a desire to be in the house of the Lord. So we want to pray for her tonight that God would touch and strengthen. Oh, Sister Tanya Sexton, want to pray for her. Brother Withrow, we're glad. Thankful that you're able to be in the house of the Lord and the Lord's touching your body. I love you and I'll give praise to the Lord for what he's done. I want to continue to pray for Brother and Sister Myers that God would touch them. I need to pray for a friend of Tony's who's battling throat cancer by the name of Jimmy. And then also another friend of his, his brother passed away. I want to pray. And then also want to pray for a friend that works with Lindsey Bruce and Sabrina White is 30 years old, just had a baby, and she's had a stroke. Her name is Lauren. And so we want to pray. And then also want to pray for the Treadway and, and uh, Deontay Coleman family. I also want to pray for Sister Marguerite. I want to pray for Brother Jerry and Sister Rhonda Walker, Sister Candy Green Bradley's in need of prayer. Ashley Means in need of prayer tonight. We want to pray for Brother Danny Stevens. I want to thank Brother Steve Altizer for being with me early this morning. We were at the hospital very early this morning. He had a procedure done. We're glad to tell you he's home recovering and doing well. Let's give the Lord praise for that. Thank the Lord. Amen for his help. Amen. Also want to pray for Sister Dawn and family on Friday. Uh, there's the funeral of her nephew, Joey. And so we want to pray for this family. Amen. They moved the time, visitations at 11, funerals at noon. So we want to pray, amen, tonight uh, for that family. And also, Jim Chris is in need of prayer, uh, cancer in the spine. This is a friend of Brother Sites. And so we want to pray, amen. The name of Jesus is greater than cancer. I said the name of Jesus is greater than cancer. The name of Jesus is greater than any sickness. The name of Jesus is greater than any disease. I also want to pray for McKenna Miller tonight. Intensive care unit needs healing. If you have a need tonight, just raise your hand. There's a spirit of prayer that's just coming to this house. Would you raise your hands right now and let's pray and let's seek the Lord for these needs right now. Lord Jesus, we pray. God, your people are moved to prayer right now in the name of the Lord Jesus. God, there was a spirit of prayer. God, there was a fervency of prayer that just came on us as we brought these needs before the people of God tonight. For Lord, you're well aware. God, you understand. You know. Lord, you saw it happening before it even transpired. And Lord, you already have the answer in place. God, you already have your purpose in place and your perfect will to be accomplished almighty God and Lord we put our faith God we put our trust in you tonight God we put our faith in you like never before we put our trust in you tonight God and we raise our hands in the sanctuary tonight calling on your name Believe in you right now in the name of the Lord. That's it. Pray for the people of God right now. Pray for the people of God. Believing the Lord to minister right now. Lay your hands on those that come forward tonight and let's pray for them as well. Believe in the Lord. God, we lay our hands on these prayer requests tonight. God, we lay our hands on these prayer requests tonight, oh God, and we believe that you will do that work that only you can do tonight, almighty God, for we stand on the word of God that says, by your stripes we are healed. God, we stand on the word of God that says you shall supply all of our needs according to your riches and glory. God, we stand on your word tonight, oh God. God that says that God with great faith that rises in your people. That God you would respond to our faith tonight, oh God. I ask you that you'll be moved by our faith tonight, oh God. Our faith is in you right now, Lord. Our faith, our confidence is in you. Our trust is in you, oh God. For Lord, we believe that you're our healer, God. We believe that you're our way maker, Lord. God, we believe that you're our provider tonight. God, we believe that you're everything that we need tonight, God. 
God, we pray for Sister Bradley tonight. Lord, we pray for Sister Phyllis Withrow tonight, God. God, we ask it in the name of the Lord. We ask it in the name of the Lord. Lord, I pray right now in the name of Jesus that, Lord, you would meet every need, every situation. For, Lord, your only hope, your only answer to God, I ask it in the name of the Lord. In the name of the Lord God of heaven and earth, God, we stand on your word tonight. God, we stand on your word tonight. God, I pray that you would meet the need of your people tonight. God, I pray for Mother Mike and Ethel Myers tonight, God. Lord, I pray for Sister Sherry Mobley tonight, oh God. In the name of the Lord, I pray for another sister workman tonight, God. In the name of the Lord, God, I pray for those that are sick in body. God, I pray for those in need tonight, God, that you would move, that you would visit, God, that you would overshadow tonight. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord. God, we ask it. We stand with our brothers and sisters, Almighty God, believing you. In the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, in the name of the Lord, with your hand raised, would you sing it tonight? Nothing is impossible with you, O God. Nothing is impossible. We believe that tonight. God, we believe that you can do anything. Lord, we believe that you can do anything. We believe that you can do anything, oh God. Just sing it before the word of the Lord. Oh, we stand in faith and confidence tonight. We believe that tonight, oh God. God, we believe that you're all we need tonight, Lord. I give you praise and glory tonight, God, in the name of the Lord. Oh, I believe tonight, Lord. Would you raise your hands towards Sister Janet tonight? She needs a touch of God. Would you raise your hands toward her? Lord, I pray for Sister Janet right now. Uh, that's it, Sister Janet. The Holy Ghost is on you. God, I pray right now in the name of the Lord. God, touch her right now. Minister to her right now. Minister to her right now, oh God. I thank you for what you're doing right now, Lord. That's it, Sister Janet. Let the Lord bless you. That's it, Sister Janet. Let the Lord touch you right now. That's it, sis. God, I receive right now in the name of the Lord. That's it. Uh, that's it. Would you worship the Lord with her right now? Would you worship the Lord with her right now, God? We praise you. We worship you tonight, God. Ah, uh, we praise you tonight, oh God. We praise you tonight, oh God. Would you help me sing it? Go ahead and give our Lord a big, great, big hand. You know, if you 
you'll clap your hands, you'll shake off those heavy bands. Shake off those heavy bands by clapping your hands. Shake them off. Hallelujah. Come on, let's give Him the praise. Oh, mighty God, mighty God. Hallelujah. It is such an honor to be here tonight. How about you? Aren't you glad you're in the greatest church in the world? Oh, well, now, wait a minute. There's so many churches, but we're in the church, the church of Jesus Christ. I'm not just talking about North Charleston Apostolic Church. I'm talking about the church that's laid on the foundation of the apostles and Jesus Christ. Hallelujah. Well, you can actually be seated if you want. I'm, I'm going to read here in a minute, but I believe the Lord gave me this, so this is for somebody tonight. Oh, I started to follow you a long, long time ago We've been to the mountaintop And through the valley low Somehow it seems I've lost my way Through the cares of it all But I remember a place spoke my name and heeded to your fall. Lord, take me back to the old landmark where I'll make a new commitment and I'll begin a brand new start. Help me find a burden in my heart Lord take me back to the old landmark now I don't know how far I've drifted or how long it may have been there's a inside of me to feel your spirit once again and whatever the sacrifice my first love to restore my soul cries out just to be renewed like never before I got a lot of paper up here. I've had people get on me before because I keep a lot of stuff in my Bible. I say, you shouldn't trash your Bible. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. I want to thank the musicians. Aren't they great? Sister Melanie's been like my go-to. Uh, I'll ask her to do a song and she picks it up. I remember when she couldn't play a note right. Man, look how good she's done. 
And look at these other ones. Probably they were little one time. Didn't have a clue that they would be playing a music, music or instrument. And look at them. Aren't you glad for musicians in the church? I am. I'm glad for our singers. I'm glad for our pastor. I'm so glad for our pastor. You all don't know how much this pastor has helped me. I'm so glad for his wife and all the glorious elders and their wives. They're the saints, my wife. Aren't you glad for friends in the church? Hallelujah. I kind of don't have a lot of time, but we're going to try to do the best we can. Hallelujah. Well, Happy New Year. So we're four years, four days into 2023, not four years. And I don't know about you, but I'm ready for revival. I'm ready for renewing, and I'm yearning for more souls to come to our church and find the Lord and be filled with the Holy Ghost and be baptized in the name of Jesus Christ. Aren't you happy for the Lord? You know, last year we just kept baptizing people. I mean, that water, I'm ready for that water to get troubled. Like the pool of Bethesda. Hallelujah. Well, if y'all want to stand with me, you can. I'll try not to keep you standing too long. And we'll read out of Genesis uh, chapter 8 and verse 18. Hallelujah. And Noah went forth, and his sons and his wife, and his sons' wives with him. I hope they just had one each, but anyway, I'm just kidding. So every beast, every creeping thing, and every fowl, and whatsoever creepeth upon the earth, after their kinds went forth out of the ark. And Noah built an altar unto the Lord, and took of every clean beast, and of every clean fowl, and offered burnt offerings on the altar. And the Lord smelled a sweet savor. Everybody say a sweet savor. And the Lord said in his heart, I will not again curse the ground any more for man's sake. For the imagination of man's heart is evil from his youth. Neither will I again smite any more every living thing as I have done. While the earth remaineth, seed time and harvest, and cold and heat, and summer and winter, and day and night shall not cease. Pastor, if you don't care to pray, please. Hallelujah, you can be seated. Let's give the Lord a big hand praise as you're being seated. Now, I'm not ignorant of the fact that we have people watching online tonight. We don't know how many. I believe you can tell sometimes by looking how many is watching online. But you never know who we might reach online and God might change their life. I'm going to tell you tonight, The struggle was real. I want to bring to you a message called Return to the Altar. Now, to be honest with you, I had another message about a month ago I was going to preach here. I thought the Lord was going to use me with that message, but he's still dealing with me on that, and it wasn't for tonight. And so uh, I'm just going to tell you, I I was at the house there not too long ago, and I started asking different people, man, did did we not, didn't somebody just preach about the altar? They already preached about the altar. I mean, started digging, Sister Means pulled up where Elder Garrett had preached, anoint the altar. I literally watched that whole message again. Elder Brian, that was a great message. Then I started digging. As I was studying, I found out that Elder Randy preached about the altar back around in January. Preached about the altar. Man, I even texted him. I said, man, I don't know what's going on here. I mean, like, because to be honest with you, when I bring a message, I don't like to bring a message of myself. I like to make sure it's the Lord that gave it to me. I don't like to get on the Internet. I would not get on the Internet. I will not get on the Internet and dig for somebody else's message. 
I'll tell you right now, I'm not going to do that. If I have to, I'll call the pastor and say, Pastor, I can't get anything. I'm just not going to preach. I'm not going to do it. Okay? I struggled. The other day, I was at the altar, and I was like praying. I'm like, Lord, help me. I, I mean, we're getting close to Wednesday. Okay? And, and something happened. I, I don't even remember exactly what it was. And all of a sudden, I heard something say, see? Like, see? This is the message you're supposed to preach. You're supposed to talk about this. You know what? We need to go to the altar every day. We need the altar in our life every single day. So if we preach it on today, and then somebody gets a thought, and they want to preach on the altar next week, then the Lord wants us to hear about the altar. Maybe He's wanting us to get on the altar. All right? And so I believe the Lord wants us to come back to the altar. Why, for the third time in less than a year, would He want that message preached? Man, I'm, I'm going to say something to you all, and y'all can repeat after me. Just look at your neighbor and say, I am through with 2022. <laughs> and I'm ready to be free in 2023. How about you? I'm ready. I'm tired of the devil. I'm tired of his lies, and I'm tired of all he's doing to distract the saints of God from living for him. There's too much junk going on. It just seems like there's always something being thrown at us, a curveball. And, and, and bless, bless the Lord, oh my soul, and all that is within me. But we lost a lot of people last year. We lost a lot of friends. I know Pastor went through many, many funerals. You know? And we know God has a reason for everything He does. But you know what? God's going to bring us through this year. And if we lose more, what I really hope is that they're ready for the Lord. And I hope that if I die, if something happens to me, if I'm driving down the road and something happens tragically, I hope I'm ready. You say, what? Yeah, I hope I'm ready. Because you know what? I can, I can run around. I can pray, I can act like I'm, act like I can pray for people, I can do this, I can do that, but if I'm not ready, what's it matter? It's a big joke, and the devil's laughing all the way. Let me tell you something, if you're not getting on the altar, the devil's going to laugh at you. You need to come back to the altar. Listen, there's a reason I'm supposed to be doing this tonight, okay? Okay. We had COVID last year. Supposedly, we're out of the COVID thing now. Y'all want to give the Lord a big hand praise on that? But you know the enemy. He'll just try to throw something else at us. Now, you know, uh, supposedly where I read a minute ago, that was the first account of an altar being built. And I could talk about altars. I could bring out all kinds of stuff. And, and, and I had a few things I was going to bring out. I mean, you know... Um, I found out about Abel. I started digging about him. And um, it doesn't say he built an altar, but it does talk about that his, what he gave to the Lord, the Lord was pleased with it more than he was with Cain. And so it says in Genesis 4 and 3, In the process of time it came to pass that Cain brought of the fruit of the ground an offering unto the Lord, and Abel, he also brought of the firstlings of his flock and the fat thereof. And the Lord had respect unto Abel and to his offering. But Cain, unto Cain, to his offering, he had no respect. And Cain was very wroth, and his countenance fell. So, so God, he liked his offering. And so I'm like, well, it doesn't say. But then Hebrews 11 and 4 says, By faith, Abel uh, offered unto God a more excellent sacrifice than Cain. So he must have did a sacrifice there, you know, by which he obtained a witness that he was righteous, God testifying of his gifts, and by it being dead, yet speaketh. And then he talks, you know, in uh, Exodus 20, 22, And the Lord said unto Moses, Thou shalt say unto the children of Israel, You have seen that I have talked with you from heaven. How many's ever had him talk to you from heaven? You shall not make with me 
gods of silver, neither shall you make unto you gods of gold. I think he was trying to say something. Don't worship nobody else but me. An altar of earth shall thou make unto me, and shall sacrifice thereon thy burnt offerings and thy peace offerings, thy sheep and thine oxen. In all places where I record my name will I come unto thee, and I will bless thee. And if thou wilt make me an altar of stone, thou shalt not build of it hewn stone, for it, if thou lift thy tool upon it, thou hast polluted it. He said, where I record my name, I will come unto thee. How many knows his name tonight? His name is Jesus Christ. And after he died, he wrote his name on our heart, if we'll take it. He will write his name on your heart if you'll be baptized in the name of Jesus. If you'll repent, be baptized in the name of Jesus, he'll fill you with the Holy Ghost. If you don't have the Holy Ghost tonight, you can get it right here in this church. So what is an altar by definition? Definition, According to Merriam-Webster Dictionary, which I like that better than most other, it is a usually raised structure or place on which sacrifices are offered or incense is burned in worship, often used figuratively to describe a thing given great or undue precedence or value, especially at the cost of something else. The Hebrew word for altar is misbia from a verbal root meaning to slaughter. And the Greek renders this word as, and I'll be, try to say this, theusiasterion, theusiasterion, a place of sacrifice. If we were to calculate the years using AD terminology, we would find that maybe over 2,000 years from the time Christ died on the cross, for our sins. He died on the cross for our sins. I'm thinking just by my counting, and I, I know I'm, it's going to be off, about 2,050 years ago, Jesus died on the cross for us. I believe that that cross became the final altar for us. That's where the offering of the supreme sacrifice was made. When an offering of sacrifice was made to God, it was to be done properly so that the effect would create a sweet savor unto the Lord. You see, our righteousness is as filthy rags unto God. In ourselves, we cannot offer the proper sacrifice to God. If we try to, it will only return void. The sacrifice was already made. But if we try to do something wrong, it's going to go into His nostrils as a stench. It takes the blood of Jesus Christ, the perfect spotless lamb, to be the atonement for our sins. How many knows what dirty laundry smells like? Nasty. I don't know why we're here again, but I feel like somebody needs to make it to the altar again. I wonder, do you feel stuck? Do you feel like you can't make it to the altar? How long has it been since you were at the altar? Where is your altar? Now, some would say this is an altar. I remember Brother Hensley, Elder Hensley, he basically crafted the trim on this altar, right? What's it going to take to get you to the altar? What's it going to take? to get you to renew your commitment to the Lord. Now, listen, the other day we had a great service. God was moving. People been filled with the Holy Ghost. Things are going great. But there's still some things I feel like that's going on that needs to be taken care of. So I'm just asking you, what would it take to get you to come to the altar? We need to make new commitments. In 2023, we need to make new commitments. How many wants a new refreshing from God? There's some things we're going to have to bring, and we're going to have to leave it there. You can't come to the altar and keep taking it back. And that's what happens. We, we don't release it. But if you would release it and let the Lord take care of it, your life would be so much more free. <laughs> Hebrews 12 and 1 says, Wherefore, seeing we are compassed about with so great a cloud of witness, let us lay aside every weight 
and the sin which does so easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race that is set before us. Looking unto Jesus, the author and the finisher of our faith, who for the joy that was set before him endured the cross, despising the shame, and has sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. The old way called for the priest to make a sacrifice for our sins on an altar. But now we have a more excellent way through Jesus Christ. He became our sacrifice. Philippians 3 and 13 says, Brethren, I count not myself to have apprehended, but this one thing I do, forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth unto those things which are before. I press toward the mark of the, for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. What we need to do this year, listen, there's souls out there that need to be saved. There's, listen, we don't have everybody in this city, in this church. There's 50,000 people. And in the valley, about 178,000 people. There's souls to be saved. But we got to get things right too. So how are we going to save someone if we're not taking care of our own altar? Now you say, well, Danny, who do you think you are? Listen, <laughs> I need an altar too. You better believe I need an altar. But we don't just need an altar here. We need an altar at home. Now, somebody brought it up, I think, not too long ago. It might have been Elder Jared. <clears throat> prayer happens at the altar. I'm going to talk a little bit about prayer real quick here. You can make an altar wherever you pray. My deep prayer time, I'm going to tell you, is right by my bedside. I have poured out my heart at my bedside as much or more as I have in the church. There's a lot of things I just don't have time to pray about in a service here at church. I've got to pray for them at home. I've got to get tears flowing at my home. I've got things I've got to take care of that if I didn't pray about them at home, it's not going to just get done here. Okay? My prayer slot at my home is longer than my prayer slot in the church. All right? I don't know about you. If I don't start my prayer in the morning, it's a rough day. It just seems like, I don't know, it don't mesh right. How many has a prayer list? A list of people that you, should pr you can pray for. Have you ever thought about making one? A prayer journal. Some people have prayer journals. I don't really have a prayer journal, but I have a prayer list. And I can go through that list and remind myself of people I need to pray for. Now, we have a list for this church. Sister Greta makes this list. Aren't you thankful for Sister Greta? Now, she asks for people to pray every week. What time does it start? Six or eight o'clock until 11 o'clock, I believe it is. And so, a lot of the same people take those slots. But you know what you could do? You could call Greta this week and say, when can I pray? Okay, so now, maybe you can't. I know the guys need to pray with the guys, and some pray, you pray at home until 6. But there is so much to pray about. But we're not going to do it if we don't find an altar. We have to find an altar in our life. There's so much to pray about. If you listen to the pastor tonight, every single service, he reminds us of people that need prayer. You know, when we see people get healed, or we see people get touched, or we see people get filled with the Holy Ghost, it's not just because it was a chance encounter. Somebody was seeking God. Somebody was on the altar. Somebody was seeking God for the service. Somebody was seeking God so that something could happen. I believe Jesus led me here because He wants somebody to be renewed. He wants somebody to be renewed. Don't you want to be renewed in the Holy Ghost? Don't you want to be filled with the Holy Ghost? I need a good dose of the Holy Ghost. That's what we need in this church. We need the Holy Ghost to move here. But we're not going to find it if we don't lay some stuff down on the altar. I believe when the prodigal son came back, his father probably set up an altar. He might have already had an altar set up because it says he came back, he said, 
And the younger of them said, His father, father, give me the portion of goods that falleth me, and he divided him his living. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together and took his journey into a far country, and there wasted his substance with riotous living. Now, I'm not saying anybody's going through riotous living here, but, and when he had spent all, there arose a mighty famine in that land, and he began to be in want. I don't know about you, but I'm in want. I don't know about you. And he says, and he went and joined himself to a citizen of the country and sent him in fields to feed swine. And he would fain have filled his belly with a husk that the swine did eat, and no man gave unto him. And when he came to himself, he said, How many hired servants of my father's have bread enough and to spare, and I perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before thee, and I am no more worthy to be called thy son. Make me as one of thy hired servants." And it says, and he arose and came to his father when he was a yet way off, a great way off. His father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said unto him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in thy sight. I am no worthy to be called thy son. But the father said to his servants, bring forth the best robe and put on him and put on him, put it on him and put a ring on his hand. And shoes on his feet. Now, Sister Shamlin, I know you're probably thinking about the message that Aaron Bounds preached one time about, we need to just keep polishing those rings. I, I, I'll say what Aaron Bounds said. We need to keep polishing those rings. We need to keep ironing those coats. And those things, you, you think that your family's not coming back to the Lord? They'll come back. But we got to get an altar going on. If you, if you, you got to get that altar on fire and shoes on his feet, and bring hither the fatted calf, and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. I bet they made a sacrifice. That's just what I think. But For this, my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. How many's tired of being in a pig pen? Now, I'm not saying you're sinning. I'm just saying this world is like a pig pen. I'll tell you what, I'm tired of it. You got, sometimes you have to hear stuff you shouldn't have to hear. You have to see things you shouldn't have to see. Not just on social media. Just go down here on the west side for a little bit. Or just go into town. You'll see things that you shouldn't have to see. You know what you need to do? Go to an altar and say, Lord, cleanse my mind. Lord, cleanse my mind so that I can get that stuff out of my mind. Clean my soul, Lord. How many would like to get back to the altar? How many wants to make a renewed commitment to the altar tonight? How many wants to get the Lord in your life on fire again? How many wants to have it be like it's fire shut up in my bones? Well, you're going to have to find an altar. Well, here's an altar. What doth hinder thee? What doth hinder thee? Look. I was going to read the scripture about the part where it says, uh, I know thy works, I know you are neither hot or cold, you are lukewarm, okay? There's differences of opinion what that means. Sometimes I think it means you're double-minded. See, it's easy to get double-minded if you don't stay on the altar. But if you stay on the altar, you'll get focused. You'll get focused in the Lord. There's some people been struggling but God's going to help you if you'll come tonight. God's going to help you find your purpose because when you get a hold of an altar, you start, things start happening. You start getting victory again. You start getting joy. You start getting renewed. You'll break chains. You'll break chains for your family. You got backslidden family? Hit the altar for them. Now, can you save them? No, you can't, but your prayers can save them because remember what happened to Peter when he was in prison? The prayers of the saints set him free. Your prayers can set your family free, and that's all there is to it. And you know what? The blood. Do you ever wake up in the morning? What you ought to do is wake up in the morning and say, I plead the blood of Jesus over my family. I plead the power of the blood over my family, over my friends, and over everything they're going through. And if you make that altar, he'll break those chains. Now, I don't know what's going on here tonight because God, you know, he knows, it, he knows all of it. He knows it all. Do you need an altar tonight in your life? Music can come. 
I really want to be careful in the spirit right now. Who would help me pray? Who would help me pray that someone would find an altar? Who would make up their mind that God would give you a new altar? Maybe you need to dust the dust off your altar, just like your Bible. Maybe, maybe the distractions of work and just things in life have been wearing you out. Maybe, the, maybe you're saying, well, you don't understand. No, I really don't. But I know someone that does. I humble myself before the Lord here tonight. Father, in the name of Jesus. Oh, Lord, have your way in this house. Have your way in this house. God, have your way in this house, Lord, tonight. Who would close their eyes and help me pray? Lord, break the chains of bondage in this house tonight. God, help us renew this altar, Lord. Lord, I pray that your fire would fall on this altar, God. Just like when Elijah prayed, God. We need you, Lord. Oh, hallelujah, hallelujah. If you're waiting on me, you don't have to wait on me. In the name of Jesus. God, let your spirit have your way in this house, Lord. In the name of Jesus, let your spirit flow. In your name, Jesus, break the chains of bondage tonight. Lord, break the chains of sickness and discouragement. Come to the altar. It's time to return, O oh child of God. It's time to return to this altar. Be renewed in the Holy Ghost. Hallelujah, hallelujah. There's souls in the balance. There's souls in the balance. There's backsliders that need to make their way back. Be behind your regrets and mistakes. Come today, there's no reason to wait. Jesus. Jesus is calling. Somebody's got family that needs to be saved. Bring your sorrows and trade it for joy. From the ashes the name of Jesus. Hallelujah. Jesus is calling. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Come on. Who would help us set the altar on fire tonight? Are you tired of just living lukewarm? In the name of Jesus. You've got a family member. You need to make your way up here. You've got a family member that needs to be saved. You ought to be up here right now. Hallelujah. Name of Jesus. If I could just say something just for a moment. I was in my office one day, not too long ago. I won't say their name. But all of a sudden, the Lord started ministering to me in the office. I had to shut my door. I guess I was still in time from the clock. But I got on my knees and started praying. And all of a sudden, I felt myself interceding for, for backsliders. I found an altar in my office. It was an hour and a half later, about an hour and a half later, a backslider that I would have never dreamed would contact me, contacted me and asked me to pray about a certain situation. You see, prayer breaks chains. The altar breaks chains. Listen, if you want to get to God, you got to go through the altar. What's the altar? The altar's the cross. Who's on the cross? Jesus Christ. You got to go through Jesus tonight. 
Hallelujah. Oh, come to the altar. Jesus. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was gone with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. is a new life's boy. Jesus is calling. Oh, come to the altar. The Father's arms are open wide. Forgiveness was bought with the precious blood of Jesus Christ. Oh, come to the altar. us back to where we committed ourselves to you, oh God. God, may a renewing rest upon us. May a renewing rest upon us, oh God. God, may a renewing rest upon us, oh God. Oh, I give you praise tonight, God. I give you praise tonight, God. We give ourselves unreservedly to you, Lord. We give ourselves unreservedly to your Almighty God. In the name of Jesus. you 
God, I worship you. Oh, we're just singing in closing. We're just singing in closing in the presence of the Lord that is with us. thing in our life, oh God. I give you praise. And I thank you, Lord. It's reasonable that what you ask of us, God. It's reasonable of that what you ask of us, Lord. I give you praise. house would you give him praise right now we love you Jesus that's it give him praise tonight for the word give him praise for what he has done how he's ministered to us tonight God I give you praise turn to your neighbor and tell him I'm thankful for the word of God tonight amen I'm going to have an altar I'm going to have an altar I'm going to have an altar thank you Elder Danny for ministering to us so wonderfully the word of the Lord Turn to somebody and tell them you bless me by being in the house of the Lord tonight. You bless me by worshiping the Lord with me tonight. Amen. Just very, very thankful for what we have felt and received. Amen. How many feels better by being in the house of the Lord on this Wednesday evening? I know you do. Amen. There's nothing like being in the presence of the Lord. Amen. You can feel refreshed and renewed by the time you leave. And I know on many occasions you come to the house of God tired in body, mind, and spirit, but you can leave refreshed and renewed. There's just something about, amen, just being in the house of the Lord together. So we want to thank you, amen, for being here tonight. We love you. We appreciate you. Thank you, musicians and singers, amen, for a wonderful job tonight. We love them so very, very much. Amen. Everyone shout Friday evening. Don't forget Friday evening is our Section 5 Amen. Fellowship rally at Glen Ferris starting at 7.30. Amen. First rally of the year. And so we want to encourage you to be a part of that service. I know that we'll have a blessed time. Amen. On Friday evening. And uh, thank you for being mindful of that. Look forward to seeing you Friday night in, in Jesus' name. I know we'll have a tremendous service. Amen. And then also everyone shout Sunday morning. Amen. We're going to have a great time in the Lord Sunday morning at 10 a.m. Sunday school and then evangelistic service at 11 o'clock. I have a word for you from the Lord. Amen. I know the Lord is going to meet with us in a tremendous way. Didn't we have a marvelous time here this past Sunday? Amen. So thankful for what the Lord did. Amen. Among us, as I know, it's not going to be any different. Amen. This coming, amen, Sunday morning. And so looking forward to a great time, 10 a.m. and uh, 11 o'clock. And then also on Sunday evening, Amen. Something very, very special will be happening. We'll be doing this throughout the year. There's some additional teaching. 
amen, in education and various subjects. And, and we want to encourage you to be a part of that this coming Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. We'll be meeting here at the church. There'll be some teaching. I'll be teaching you about altar workers, amen, and altar ministry and praying with people, ministering to people at the altars, praying people through the Holy Ghost, how to help them to receive the Holy Ghost. And so I encourage you to be here with us Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. I encourage all of our altar workers to be here, all of you that desire to glean and, and receive from that teaching. Be here Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. It'll be about 6.30. And so I know with the Lord will bless us, there'll be an outline, a handout for you to take home with you as well. And so I know it'll be a great strength to you. Amen. I know the Lord's going to minister to us Sunday evening at 5 o'clock. Amen. And then also, amen, on Sunday, January the 15th, all of you that are involved in Elisha ministry, don't forget we'll be meeting uh, Sunday evening at 5 o'clock as well for Elisha ministerial training. And there's Genesis Children's Outreach on Sunday. And then Purpose Student Ministries is having a pasta bar fundraiser for CCYC, various types of pastas and and various types of desserts and garlic bread and the list goes on and so you'll not want to miss that i know that we'll have a great time amen on the 15th following service and then we need to make sure we announce that on wednesday january the 18th is our annual business meeting we need to have this business meeting each and every year and so that'll be january the 18th is our annual business meeting amen amen uh elder hickman notified me tonight that i believe we have 21 uh, individuals so far that we'll be honoring on Sunday that have read the Bible through last year. And I think we ought to give them a great big hand. That's a wonderful, wonderful accomplishment. And so we'll have certificates ready for all of those that will, amen, be here on Sunday morning and honor them. And then also for the new year, we also have the new bread uh, reading chart. Amen. See him and he will get that to you. Amen. Directly. Amen. Let's stand to our feet. Turn to somebody and tell them I love you and I appreciate you. Amen. Tell them they're a blessing by being in the house of the Lord. If there's anything we can do for you, amen, we'll be sure and, and be sure and let us know. We'll be glad to serve you and help you any way we possibly can. If you see someone that's not here tonight, make sure you give them a phone call or a text or the Lord lays somebody on your heart. Make sure you reach out to them and let them know you love and appreciate them and be in prayer for them. And I know the Lord is going to bless and minister. Amen. Amen. Brother Leek, would you come? Would you pray a blessing on the people of God tonight? And the favor of the Lord. How many needs the blessing of the Lord and the favor of the Lord in your life? Amen. I know that you do. And we're going to pray and believe that tonight in Jesus' name. Let's all bow our heads. Father, we thank you tonight for the words that we've heard. We thank you for your spirit, Lord God, that's entered into this house. And let us take to heart the words that we have heard, Lord, and that will make our altar stronger. I know, Lord, that you told us to go into our secret place, our closets, or wherever that it may be. My favorite place is the mountains where I can commune with my Savior. God, I ask you to watch over and keep us and protect us this night and bring us back safely together once again. And we ask this in Jesus' name. Amen.